Hello, wonderful people. Welcome back to my channel, The Teacher's Best Friend. And this is Mary Lou Oreño. So for the past few weeks, I discussed about professional development, uh, what is the effect of this COVID-19 and the online uh, learning to our students and a lot more about professional development. However, I have several viewers who are asking questions about uh, applying to the United States. And some of them, they already receive job offer from their employers and they are wondering what's the next step. So for today's episode, I'm going to discuss with you the steps on uh, what are you going to do after you receive a job offer? So that means the employer is already interested of hiring you. And what is the difference between the processing of the J-1 and H-1 visa? So um, let's see. I will start first with the J-1 visa. So what's, what happened when, let's say, after you submitted several applications and you have undergone interviews, and finally, an employer decided to, to hire you and they like you. And with that, they're sending you a job offer with the position that you're applying for and the salary. So what is the next step after that? So how are you going to qualify for a different kind of visa? For a J-1, most agencies uh, in the United States that are sponsoring J-1 visa, they are very clear that the teachers who are qualified for J-1 visa are the teachers of record. And who are those teachers? Let's say you are an elementary teacher, you are teaching first grade or a second grade or any other grade level, level from kindergarten to sixth grade, then you are qualified for a J-1 visa as long as you have an education as bachelor's degree and at least two years of experience, full-time teaching experience in a real school. It's not like a tutorial center or just a tutorial at home. It should be a classroom full-time experience. And uh, you have a credential saying that you are a bachelor of science in elementary education. So you are a bachelor's degree. Then you are qualified for J-1. And um, another areas of teachers that are qualified for J-1 are the specialized teacher. Like for example, if you are a special education teacher, then you are qualified for J-1 visa with the same criteria with bachelors of uh, arts in education and at least two years full-time experience in the special ed. That is the key requirements for J-1. And if you are a secondary teacher, let's say major in mathematics or major in science or major in social studies, those teachers are qualified for J-1. So let's say they gave you a job offer for the position of an elementary teacher as a second grade. So what will be the next step? There are two uh, procedure. If the school has their sponsoring agency to process your J-1, that is going to be very easy because they'll do everything. They'll just ask for your credentials and they'll submit it to the sponsoring agency and then they will process your J-1. And what if the, the school district, they don't have a sponsoring agency or sometimes it's their first time of hiring J-1 and they have no idea what's the next procedure. So you need to know what's the next step so you can move forward. Like one of my viewers answer like, the school doesn't have a sponsoring. Um, the question is, the school doesn't have a sponsoring agency. Where can I look for those sponsors? And if you remember, I think in my series number six, I shared uh, the sponsoring agencies. Um, you have to go to the website of the Bridge USA and you will find those agencies that are um, eligible to sponsor J1. Okay. 
So you you need to email those agency if the school doesn't have an, an agency and then tell them that you are hired, show them your job offer, and then they'll start the process. And you need to remember that each agency have different uh, like price in terms of their fees. There are agencies that charge from like 1,500 and some agencies up to 3,000 or 3,300. It varies depending on uh, the agency. And um, once they agree to sponsor your J-1, there are documents that you need to sign. So first is the program disclosure for the J-1. The program disclosure is just saying that this is the position that you are applying for. You are assigned a second grade teacher, and this is your supervisor, and this is the address of the school that you're going to work with, and this is the amount of salary that they're giving you, and these are the conditions. Let's say there are housing available in the district, or there are transportation available, things like that. So those, those uh, documents are, I mean, those information are in the program disclosure. What do you expect in your program when you are going to join as a J1 or exchange teacher? And another important document that you need to sign is uh, the acknowledgement of change status. What is that document? It's just a piece of paper saying that you understand that your visa is a J1 and um, the first term is three years. And then if they like you, they can extend up to another two years. So that is five years. And that means within that five years of your uh, contract as a J1, the acknowledgement is saying that you cannot change your visa to any kind to an H1 or a green card and all that. And you will stick to a J1 program because that's what you are coming from in the United States. So you, you will sign that document. And then another documents that they will ask from your employer are, um, there are agreement that they will, you know, provide uh, equal opportunity to you as a teacher, as a foreign teacher. And also uh, you will be provided by insurance and there are certain stipulations there on what kind of coverage are they giving you. So once those documents are submitted to the sponsoring agency, then the sponsoring agency will submit your papers to the US Department of State so that they can process your service and your DS uh, 2019 and the DS 2019 uh, when upon receiving it, they will mail it to you wherever your address is. You will use that document so you'll be interviewed or uh, get a schedule at the U.S. Embassy for your J-1 visas uh, interview so that they can stamp your passport uh, for a J-1 visa. And then once that's stamped, then you can already uh, book your flight to the US. But there are still other uh, things that you need to remember. I know that J-1 teachers, you need to go to the Commission on Filipino Overseas to register yourself, and they will give you like a pre-departure orientation seminar, and they'll give you like a card signifying that you, you, um, you did that, and uh, when you fly in the immigration, they'll check all those documents. So don't forget, that is very important. So that is the process of uh, applying for a J-1 once you receive your job offer, okay? So it's, it's very simple. And uh, another thing that you also need to remember is while you are waiting for your documents and you are in the Philippines, you need to start working on your credential evaluation submit it, uh, search for, uh, it's also in my video, one of my series, uh, credential evaluation companies, you submit your original transcript and they do an equivalency um, test or like uh, review. Why is that important to prepare while you are waiting? Because as soon as you arrive in the US, your school district will ask you to get your teaching certificate. And in order for you to get, to get your teaching certificate is 
you need to have your credential evaluation with you ready. And don't worry, that credential evaluation, I think it's valid or recognized for five years. So even if you get it, even before you fly, that's okay. It's better to be prepared rather than, um, you know, preparing everything when you are in the U.S. and there's so much things to do and they're expecting you to jump right away and teach in the classroom. So that is a J1, okay? Now, I want you to, uh, if you have a paper and pen, also to have it with you ready. Let's move to who are the teachers or um, applicants that are eligible for H1, okay? So, you know, the immigration law, they change a little bit. Before, if you are a counselor, you can also get a J-1 visa, or if you are a, let's say, a media specialist or an intervention teacher, you are qualified for J-1. But now, because of the change in their procedure, positions such as um, school counselors, uh, library media specialists, and including uh, school psychologists, and if you are also applying for supervisory positions like principals or administrative positions. And also, if you are an elective teacher, let's say you are a um, in for computer science teacher and it's like an elective and you are teaching multiple grade level. That's the key. You are teaching multiple grade level and you are not a teacher of record. Then you are not qualified for J1, but you are qualified for H1B. And if you are also a teacher, like for example, uh, if you are, let's say a secondary high school teacher going to teach a transition specialists or a reading interventionist, those positions, they are not teachers of record. So for the current ruling, you are not eligible to get a J-1. But the good news is you can still come to the United States on an H-1B visa. But the question here is, are the employers willing to get those procedure or take that procedure to hire you as an H-1? And yes, most school districts are doing that because that is the current law. They have no choice. They cannot hire a counselor or a media specialist or a school psychologist or a therapist if they will not use an H-1 visa because those positions are no longer qualified for J-1 visa at this point in time. And who knows, rules might change again in the near future, but for now, those positions are qualified for an H-1B visa. So what is the next step? Once you are hired also as, let's say you are a media specialist, you're a counselor, you are an elective teacher, what is the next step after they give you a job offer? So it's, it's a, a little bit lengthy compared to J-1 because J-1, you just need to sign the documents coming from the agency and they'll process you right away. But for H-1B, there are steps such as um, the immigration lawyer, you need to use an immigration lawyer, the school sometimes they have those, they have to file a labor certification for that position, certifying that those positions are highly skilled and they are posted and the school is not hiring locally so they can import from other foreign countries. So that is a labor certification filed. And then um, after that, you will submit all your requirements, credentials, resume, transcripts, diploma, and all that. They need all of those. And also, um, in order for the immigration lawyer to proceed with the filing of your H-1B, the important uh, step is for you to file for teaching certificate in the United States. So it means even though you're still in a foreign country, it is important that you file your teaching certificate because the, the process will not proceed unless you have a proof 
that you filed your teaching certificate in the state that you are going to work. Like for example, if you're going to work in Chicago, you need to file your teaching certificate at the Chicago Department of Education, or if you're working in Texas, go to the Texas Department of Education, or if you're working in Arizona, go to the Arizona Department of Education to file for your teaching certificate. And before you file your teaching certificate, you need to have your credential evaluation, and that's a must. And, uh, and also, you need to download their application they have there in their website. So that is an extra step that you need to take. So once you have a proof that you filed your teaching certificate, then the immigration attorney can proceed with filing your H-1B. And then with the H-1B visa, there are fees that are supposed to be paid by your employer, the legal fees, like the processing and the uh, attorney's fees. Those are the responsibilities of the district. And other fees that are, let's say, for the expedite process, you are responsible in paying that. So for H-1B, there is uh, the fees responsible, uh, the employers are responsible for, and there are fees where the applicant is responsible for, okay? So you need to take note of that. So once you completed the teaching certification or filed your teaching certification, then the immigration uh, law office can proceed with filing your H-1B. And if you use the expedite process, within 15 days, you will know the result, okay? And then after that, once you get the, the paper that your H-1B was approved, then you schedule your interview to the U.S. Embassy in your country, in your location. And then I think uh, there are other steps there. Um, you need to register yourself to the office of the overseas workers, like the in, in the Philippines, they call it the POEA. You need to register yourself as an overseas worker, okay? Because H-1B are considered a visa or a working visa, okay? And J-1 are cultural exchange. So those are totally different. So that is the different uh, the difference between the H-1 and the J-1 and the steps upon receiving your job offer. So that means you're already hired and those are the steps that you need to take. And I wish every one of you who are dreaming to work in the United States, good luck to all of you. And the important thing is always prepare yourself. You need to know that you are highly eligible or credentialed, you're highly qualified, you are prepared, okay? You cannot just dream without preparing yourself. It means like, if you know that you that's your uh, goal, you need to work for that goal, okay? Because uh, there are requirements that you need to meet in order to come to the US. And you cannot, uh, you know, you cannot represent yourself in a different way. You need to be honest in every aspects, okay? So good luck for now and thank you for watching. And if you have questions, uh, you can email me at the teachersbestfriend at gmail.com or you can just put your comments down below, okay? So for now, I have to say uh, bye for now and thank you for watching and to God be the glory. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel and this is your first time watching, please click that uh, subscription button and like thumbs up okay so thank you and to god be the glory bye for now